Hey, so I have made it to the Port Elliott Festival in Cornwall, and it is so beautiful, and I'm so excited to be here. This is the first time I'm going to be shooting van therapy episodes in my borrowed Cornish VW. Okay, turning over, rolling. Sound? Sound speed. All right, this is Jenny, interview, take one. Uh, this is a first on Van Therapy episodes. We've been totally rained out, so now we have the entire crew and Jenny in the VW bus. Um, so we have Sonia, and we have Ollie, and we have Joe, and we have Sam, the sound guy. We're all here, and most importantly, we have Jenny. Hi, I'm Terry. Hi, nice to meet you, Terry. Nice to meet you. So, um, are you having a good time at the at the Port Elliot Festival? Is this something you come to a lot? We come every year to perform. Oh, okay. Just for the day. And yeah. you, oh, just for today, you're here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we got really lucky then. Yeah. So I didn't get to see you, but I heard that you're a belly dancer. No. You're a scarf person? Yeah. Okay, a scarf dancer. Tell me, explain to me what you do. We, we do contemporary dance, basically. And it just so happens that this performance is all about scarves. It's just that, you know, Port Elliot Festival, everybody likes to join in. So we like to do something that's, that's really um, encourages people to come and join us. So we have lots of scarves for them to come and... And uh, right at the end of the piece, then we invite them all in to come and Oh, come that's dance. great. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So ha were you a dancer your whole life? Nope. Um, so how did it, you got involved in this as like, as what kind of experience? Um, I met, a, I, I play the saxophone. So I met a friend through a band. Okay. And uh, she used to go to this dance class, which was run by the most amazing woman, Audrey Cook. Um, and she kept, uh, she, she'd been a wonderful dancer in the 20s and 30s. Uh -huh. And she took class until she was 92, I think. Wow. And um, yeah, we used to go to her classes. And we didn't you really used to perform very much. But then after she died, we um, developed ourselves further. And we decided we'd like to go out and do festivals and, and things like that. So just for the love of dance. It's mainly older women. Uh, we have a couple of men who sometimes come, but it's just, we love dancing. And it makes you happy. And it makes us happy, yeah. Okay, yeah. well that's, and that's important. Oh, absolutely. Well, I was asking a couple of other people um, about, you know, I mean, some of it, part, have you ever been to America? Um, yes, for about 10 hours, I think it was. Oh, at an airport? And that's how I came to be to play the saxophone. Oh, you're kidding? No. Okay, you got to tell me that story. Well, yeah, I was in uh, Los Angeles and I had a 10 hour stopover. Uh huh. So I thought, well, I'll just go and have a look around, see what I can see in 10 hours. Um, did that and then was sitting at a bus stop waiting for the bus to go back to the airport. And this um, gray haired black guy came up to me and said, uh, is this you know, where you catch the bus for the airport. So I said, well, I hope so, otherwise I'm going to miss my flight. So we got talking and he said, oh, you're English. And I said, yes. And he said, oh, I was in England during the war. Do you still have red buses and do you still eat fish and chips out of paper? So I said, yes, yes, we do. So we got talking and I asked him what he did. And he was a saxophone player. So I said, do you know, I've always wanted to play the saxophone. Oh, you must do that, he said. And we got on the bus and he had this big booming voice. And he kept talking to me. And just as I was about to get off the bus, he said, you go out and you buy that saxophone and you blow that horn, he said. So that's what I did. I, within a week, I'd bought a saxophone and then I started playing. I was oh. in my 50s. Oh yeah. my God, that is such a great story. Oh, his name was Kenny and I wish I'd taken his full name and wish I could have said to him later just what... A difference it made to my life, you know, taking that up and, uh, you know, I perform and yeah, it's wonderful. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm going to cry. I mean, it's just <laughs> like so amazing yes. on so many levels that a what the the thing of what you never know what a stranger is going to bring well, you. Well, that's right. Yeah. You, you know, um, I mean, how spectacular how, how spectacular is that? And also that you were in your fifties when you picked up. Lots of people approach even their 50s as like, oh, it's too late to learn how to do this. And No, it's never too late. Um, I didn't really do a lot with it until I retired because uh -huh. I didn't have time with my job. 
And so um, in my 60s, I started to try and learn to improvise, which I, I can't do in the sort of conventional way. So I just went for it in my way. And then when I was 66, I decided to go out busking. And uh, my brother was over from Australia. And I said, yeah, I, th I think I'm going to go out and have a go. So he said, OK, let's go out into the street because they had a special event on. There was a fair on. So I thought, I'm going to do it. Lots of people do. And I got, got I out there. You. I got out there and uh, I started to set up. And a guy came up and gave me a pound. And he said, where's your hat? And I said, oh, I didn't think to bring one. <laughs> so, so my brother um, took his sun hat off and put it out. And, I started playing and um, within half an hour I'd raised 15 pounds. Oh my God! And there was this dear lady who came up to me because I played music from the sort of 40s and 50s, okay. all the old standards, Ella Fitzgerald sort of stuff. And she came up to me and she said, um, I wish I could go home and get my deck chair. She said, I'd love to come and sit and listen to you. Oh, look at that. And it's just, I'm not a brilliant player, but people like it. And it's so nice to give people that pleasure. Wow. Especially since it's the sort of music that you don't hear too much now. Yeah. And of course it's of a certain era and um, although it's becoming more fashionable again now. So I'm yeah. so inspired by you. I think everybody's going to be. I mean, I'm really kind of knocked <laughs> out. It's, you know, this is, you, this is crazy because the timing is, it's our last interview of the day. All we right. got totally rained out. The whole crew is in here together. I feel like it's, we're, we're literally camping. This is, a, this is a festival where people are camping and we're camping with you. And you're telling me that, I mean, I, I, I just, I'm so inspired by this. It makes me, it makes me want to, go learn new things and make oh, sure that I'm open to, you never, to, yeah, to strangers. You never stop learning till the day you stop breathing, in my opinion. You right. just, you just, you know, life is a learning experience and there's always something new to learn, um, no matter what your age. And also the giving back part of it. So you're it getting because, something out of it, but you're making other people feel yeah, good. Yeah, because I do it for charity. Uh -huh. So whatever I raise goes to charity. And um, my best gig is the supermarket because it's got... <laughs> It's got a very good, very high acoustic. ceiling, and the acoustics are marvellous. And you start playing, and you think, God, who's that saxophone player playing? And then you realise it's you. <laughs> and then people come along and say things like, oh, you know, I hate shopping, but this has really made my shopping experience really good. Thank you very much. I only want to go to your grocery store <laughs> <laughs> from now on. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for telling me that story. Uh, that, I mean... What an amazing life you've had. It, you just seem, you're a really inspirational person. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, you are to me. <laughs> you are to me. It was a good story. Thank you so much. That's okay. Oh, wow. Okay, well, everybody, um, I'm inspired. I almost cried. I don't know, like, what you did, but uh, I just wish we should just have the Jenny hour every day because <laughs> I'm sure you have more stories to tell. Um, just to me, just a few, just a few. You want to tell more? Yeah. Oh, you're good. It was a good one. I know when it got gold, and I got gold. <laughs> um, so uh, anyway, um, wow, you can't really do better than that. Subscribe to my channel, and I doubt you'll find a better video, but you can check them all out just in case. <laughs>